are here yet standing. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your devout wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for leading us, for guiding us, for saving us, for redeeming us, and for keeping us. We thank you, God, for anointing us from the crowns of our head to the very soles of our feet. We thank you, God, for allowing us to see another day. This was a day that was not promised, but by your mercy and your grace, you've allowed us to breathe the breath of life on today. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Lord, for all that you will do. And thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. We thank you, Lord, for everyone here under the sound of my voice. I pray a special blessing on their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Write us for our wrongs. Fix every and any condition according to your will, way, your purpose, and your plan. Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's give our praise team another hand. Especially that beautiful one that was on the drums. I would say she belonged to me, but it's more like I belong to her. Amen. Thank God for each one of you. It's been a, a long week. Amen. It's been a, a trying week. And it's a beautiful thing for brothers and sisters to come together before the Lord. Thank God for the leadership of the house. Thank God for, again, my lovely wife and my daughter somewhere, bossing someone around. I say it all the time because she does it all the time. Amen. Thank you for you all's prayers. I won't delay the time. Um, I promise that this is probably the shortest, the shortest message I preach that's going to take the most time. Amen. I don't know how that's possible, but we're going to see what the Lord has to say. Amen. And if you all are nice, I will give you the two hour version. That's the short version. <laughs> you know, we're going to get on out of here. Uh, if you would open your Bibles to. Uh, the book of First Samuel, chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. The book of First Samuel, chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. I love the sound of paper moving. Amen. Nowadays, we have technology for everything. But when paper moves, that means it's up here. Amen. It's okay if you got your iPads and your Androids and your G pads and all that other stuff, but I love the sound of paper. Amen. First Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. Y'all praying for me? I love a talk back church. Y'all praying for me? All right. I'm praying for you. Uh, beginning at chapter, beginning, beginning at verse 14, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. I'm going to pause there for a second because a lot of people just kind of glance over that. The second half of that first verse when it says a distressing spirit from who? From the Lord troubled him. Now we know that, that in God is no darkness at all. So I want to make it clear that God didn't just have a pocket full of darkness to send on Saul. Amen. God does not operate in sin. And the Bible says he hath no sin. What he did was allow a distressing spirit, a depressing spirit, an anxious spirit to trouble Saul. And Saul's servant said to him, surely 
a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let us master, let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp. And it shall be that he will play with his hand when the distress, distressing spirit from God is upon you and you shall be well. So Saul said to his servants, provide me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. Mm -hmm. Then one of the servants answered and said, look, I have seen a son of the Bethlehemite. If I said it wrong, pray for me. Who is skillful in playing a mighty man of valor, a man of war, prudent in speech and a handsome person. And the Lord is with him which is the most important, amen? Therefore, Saul sent messengers to, G to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. And Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat and sent them by his son, David, to Saul. Verse 21, so David came to Saul and stood before him. And he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer mm. then Saul said to sent to Jesse saying please let David David stand before me for he has found favor in my sight and so it was whenever the spirit from God was upon Saul that David would take a harp and play with it, play it with his hand then Saul would become refreshed and well and the distressing spirit would depart from him. Do me a favor, look at the person next to you and tell them it's a setup. I could tell by the sound, the person next to you don't believe you. You might have to go outside your row. Find somebody and look them in the eye and tell them God is setting you up for a blessing. Tell them God is setting you up. Uh-huh, for a blessing. Y'all don't mind if I be myself. Robert James Fisher, better known as Bobby Fisher, was an American chess grandmaster and the 11th world chess champion. As a chess prodigy, he won his first of record eight U.S. championships at the age uh, of 14. In 1964, he won with an 11 0 score, the only perfect score in the history of the U.S. tournament. In 1985, Gary Kasparov became the youngest world champion ever at the age of roughly 22 and a half. Magnus Carlsen has been the number one ranked player since 2011 and has been dominating the game of chess ever since. In February 2020, Carlson went on a 125 game undefeated streak in standard time controls, another record for the world champion. Stay with me. It is said that chess players can mentally map out the future consequences of up to eight possible moves ahead, uh-huh, setting up their opponent. But even if you add up the IQ and skill sets of all these great chess champions, Bobby Fischer, you might be great. Magnus, you might have the skills that pays the bills. Mr. Gary, you might uh, be outstanding in setting up your opponents, but when it comes, Mr. Sister Heather, to the master chess player, God knows the ending before the beginning. God knew you when you were at, before you were ever conceived. He separated you uh, from your mother's womb. For the Bible declares in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future or an expected end. Don't look now, but God is setting you up for a blessing. Somebody say, it's a setup. Mm -hmm. 
There is a formula for what I call the setup. There are steps to the setup. There is a spiritual algorithm that makes up what I call the setup. I want to talk about these three steps briefly uh, before I get out your way. The first step is the prophecy. The second step is the process. And the third step is the promise. Huh? The prophecy, the process, and the promise. First, let's deal with the prophecy. The word of God is full of many prophesied promises. The Bible over and over declares promises over your life. Just to name a few, the Bible says in Deuteronomy that you shall be blessed when you come in uh -huh, and blessed when you go out. The Bible says, give and it shall be given to you in good measure. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it shall be measured back to you. The Bible says in Psalms 27 that if I wait on the Lord and be of good courage, that he will strengthen my heart. The word of God continually speaks of God's promises. Oh, but there is a process. Huh? This, my people, is where it gets a little tricky. Mm -hmm. It would be juvenile for us to think that the promises of God don't come with some sort of responsibility on our part. Even when you've opened your heart and said yes to God, there was a process that began because of something that you did. It's the process of sanctification. Now, let's deal with the process. We've heard about the prophecy. Now, let's deal with the process. Process is defined as a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. The definition of process, according to Google, you know, everything on Google is right. Thank you for the one laugh. Process is defined as a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end. In order to get through the process, there are things that we have to do. It's not enough to just have faith. For the Bible declares that faith without works is dead. So not only do you have to believe, but you have a portion of this responsibility to do something. What do you do when the process doesn't seem to be lining up with uh, the promise? I want to do a quick illustration, and I hope that something is done uh, that will resonate with you when dealing with the process. I'm going to ask Elder Ray to come up. I'm going to ask Joshua to come up. I'm going to ask uh, 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 Minister, Minister Duran to come up. Even, even Chief. Come on, Chief. And, and Brother Robert. You come on. Y'all come up. Mm. I'm going to do this quick illustration of the process. Chaplain Ray, you can go sit with my wife. If, you, if that's okay. I'm going to move this out the way. Y'all said I can be myself, so I'm going to do that. All right. So this is my illustration of the process. We're going to have Elder Ray stand here. That's right, stand there. That's right, do what the Lord say. I represent God, by the way. <laughs> Y'all come on. Come on over here. I want you to stand here. Come on. Y'all stand about three feet behind each other. Maybe a little bit more. So this is my illustration of the process. The Bible says that David was handsome. I got some handsome, handsome brothers up here. Amen. This is my illustration of the process. Here we have the prophecy. You represent the prophecy. Lord going to bless you. He going he gonna to hook you up. Yeah, you got it. You got it coming. 
But in order to get to the blessing, you got to go through the process. Amen? Amen? Now, I didn't want to name sin, but you represent sin. Amen? Forgive me. You represent sin. You can choose whatever sin you like. You represent sin, and you represent sin. Now, when I say sin, I know it's a lot of sins, right? You represent challenges. You represent challenges. How about that? You represent challenges and challenges in the process. We tracking? Now, I'm going to choose one of your blessings because I know it's a blessing. So I'm going to ask Chaplain Ray to stand behind the last challenge. Now, watch this. (laughs) Now, here we have, he's been prophesied over that the Lord is going to bless him with a wife. Amen. You sing on right now for a minute. Sorry, sis. A few seconds. You've been, you've been, you've been, if it's been prophesied over, you've been blessed, you're going to be blessed with a wife. You just got saved. Right? So I want you to begin to walk towards your blessing. Now, mind you, you just got saved. Backsliding is not an option, so you can't go backwards. Right? right? And you're walking. And you can't. You got it. I'm following. <laughs> I didn't, know, I didn't know I had to give him instructions. Sorry. Walk when I tell you to walk. How about that? You can't fight the challenge. You can't run from it. Now, I want you as the prophecy to begin to walk toward your promise. Walk slow for me. Not too slow. Come on. Stop. Your first challenge. Now. Now. You've come up to your first challenge. Remember, it's not going to move. You can't fight it. What do you do? No, no, you, you say, you, you're, a new, you're a new convert. We don't call on God when we're brand new. Okay, okay, amen. I want you to, uh, you, see, you see your problem. What do most people do? How about that? Or you can't move it. So what do you do? Right, stop. No, right here, right here. He's in the process Now, his blessing, the promise is there. But now, because you've went around it, you found yourself in a different process. A process that was not designed for you. Right? It wasn't designed for you. So now, come forward. Every time you try to walk, there's an issue. Come on. I try to get financially best. Issue. I'm... Health problems, issue. People start talking crazy about me. There's always some issue, and you're sitting wondering, why is it so difficult? It's because you've chosen a process that does not belong to you. Now, you may be blessed a little bit in this process, but it's not the blessing that you need, need. It's just the blessing that you like. You might be blessed a little bit more in this process, but it's not the blessing that you need. How many people need a need, need a blessing? Amen. It's not the blessing that's for you. So now, what do we do in order to go through the process from the prophecy to the blessing? This is where it gets tricky. The Bible says, now you save, that we walk by faith and not by what? Watch this. Blindfold yourself. We walk by faith and not by sight. So if that's the case, we walk... I mean, it don't have to be prayer, as long as you can't see. Now, here again, we have the prophecy, (laughs) right? There we have the blessing. And now, because you've chosen to obey Scripture and walk by faith and not by sight, now your trust is not in you, but who is your trust in? Facts. So now watch this. Now you're walking. Go ahead, walk a little bit. It get a little bit difficult, but you're still walking. Keep going. Keep walking. It's a little bit tiring, but you're walking. Walk slower. I don't want you to run over. Stop. I'll make you stop. (laughs) But now because you chose to walk by faith and not by sight, and because you believe when the word of God said the battle doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the Lord, now watch what happens when you start walking. Walk. You're walking by faith and not by sight. Keep walking to the promise. You're walking by faith and not by sight. Keep walking to the promise. You're walking by faith and not by sight. Keep walking to the promise. You're walking by, notice that it's not you that's trying to go around it. You're still in. Stop. 
you're still in the process. And you're in the process that was designed for you. We tracking? Walk a little bit further. A little further. Come on. A little further. You're almost there. A little further. Stop. Take your blindfold off. There's the blessing. <laughs> Amen? There's the blessing. But it goes a little bit further. Turn around, bow face. Now you stand here. Together, the two have become one. Move over a little bit. Move over a little bit, Josh. Both Josh's. Face this way. Now the two have become one. Amen? Now... You're going to walk together, for with the Lord put together, let no man put asunder. Now, the only blessing now is heaven, right? Don't let all that represent heaven. Nobody been here big enough that maybe I am, but, you know. But you walk together and hand in hand. The Bible says that a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Amen? But watch this. Now you're walking together. Walk. Walk together. Stop. Right? When you marry her, you married her from the age she was all the way down to when she was born. You didn't just marry her at the age she was. Same vice versa. But what happens is, it's marriage counseling one-on-one, what happens is this. You come up to a problem, and now you know how to process it by what you see, and she knows how to process it by what she see. Walk. But look what happens. You begin to be separated in the process. And the more problems that come apart, come to you. Come on. The more of it, let go. You're going to have to let go. The more of a separation happens in the process. Now watch this. <laughs> We're going to do it again. Go to the back. Get together. Hand in hand. Right? Y'all both say y'all trusted God. You can just close your eyes. Now, you're walking by faith and not by what? Say it again. Walking by faith and not by. And so now, because they decide together, your eyes supposed to be closed. How are you following God? God. Okay. Now, you, now, because you're following what God said to walk by faith and not by sight, walk together. God come along and move. The issue's out your way. Now you're walking in the process that God, look at that. Both of their eyes is closed. And they're trusting God that God is going to lead them. Go straight. Keep going. Move to your right a little bit. Move to your right a little bit. You all right? Go straight. Open your eyes. Stop. Now together, they have achieved the blessing. Amen? Amen? Thank you. X mark the spot. Bam. No, I'm keeping my tie on. <laughs> so now we have dealt with the process. I've often heard people say, trust the process. Right? We hear people say it all the time. Who's heard that before? Trust the process. Trust the process. I challenge that. I challenge that. Don't trust the process. The process will fail you. You need to trust the God of the process. Amen? Trust the God of the process. Thirdly, and I'm almost done, we have the promise. Uh, now, I can't deal with the promise without dealing with the cross. It's because of the blood of Jesus that I even have access to the promise. If not for God's mercy, I'm not making it through the process. Thus, making the promise invalid. If not for grace, there wouldn't be a promise for Larry Johnson. I would have messed up a long time ago, but because Jesus died on the cross, uh, I have mercy and not justice. I walk in grace and not condemnation. Remember, grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. Think about the promises that God has already kept in your life. There was a process to getting to that promise, even if that process was just simply believing. God is so good, even when we have trouble believing, 
Even the times we've doubted along the way, even when a two-day journey takes 40 years, he still keeps his promises. If I heard people say, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. I challenge that too, because whether you believe it or not, if God said it, that settles it. Uh, as I go to my text, verse 14 says, praise team, you can get ready. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said to him, I'm feeling a little preachy, so I'm going to back off a little bit. Uh, 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 and Saul's servant said to him, surely uh, a distressing spirit from God is troubling you. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the heart. Uh, uh, first notice the instrument of choice. Uh, the heart was an instrument that created a particular atmosphere of peace, serenity, and healing. It wasn't the most popular instrument. It wasn't the instrument that most folks would choose, but it was the instrument that was needed for this particular assignment. Uh, blink and you're going to miss the setup. I promise you. You are an instrument for God. Uh, you might not be the most popular or who people would choose first, but you are the instrument that God wants to use for a particular assignment. Uh, verse 19 says, therefore, Saul sent messages to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. Notice Saul went from what he needed to whom he needed. David didn't have a fight for his portion. He didn't have to fight for his position. David didn't have to step on anyone's toes or even learn a new skill. But David's abilities were already in him. The gift that God wants to use for your next assignment is already in you. Also notice that Saul didn't know David, but David's name was in the mouth of those that had influence on Saul's choice. God can place your name in the mouths of those that have influence or those that make the decisions. You are an instrument that God wants to use. You have the gifts that God gave you that will put you in to position. Trust God and he will bring it to pass. God is in a setting up business and he is setting you up for a blessing.